Hello and welcome everyone to the first ever Smash Club and MUTV Invitational. This here, I am Chris Eggs Hardy and with me here on the desk is Reed Priam Black. Mm -hmm. We are going to be your casters for today. We have ourselves quite, quite the bracket. The top eight Smash Bros players at Millersville University playing off against each other head to head. Best of three, single elimination. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so yeah, here we go. We got ourselves quite a uh, matchup today. We actually have a couple stand, or we have one stand in. We one have stand -in. Uh, instead of our usual uh, top four of, unfortunately, Sharps A, our number Sharps four A. on the PR, um, and Deku, our number uh, six on the PR now, yeah. and uh, Shane, also known as uh, Gobi, Gobi, our number five, is going to be sitting out. In for him is going to be. Asian Glow actually not on the PR, but is going to be filling in. He was available at the time, so. Exceptional game and watch. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But first off, we have ourselves Sovine versus Harambe. Uh, Sovine, a little bit, uh, as of late, he's been all over the place with his, uh, his uh, character pool. Mm -hmm. He has pulled out the DK, he's pulled out Mario, I've seen him play Cloud. He's all over the place. Harambe usually sticks to his patented Donkey Kong and Cloud. And uh, so here we are into game one. We are on Smashville, usually the, uh, the first starter platform, uh, the starter stage for just about every set. And uh, we are on to charging uh, the limit from Cloud and charging the uh, the giant punch from Donkey Kong. Just a uh, just a bit of a gentleman's charge. And Harambe off to a very yeah. commanding lead already. Harambe's uh, already gonna at a hundred percent almost for uh, this Donkey Kong. And uh, limit is on deck. Limit one of uh, Cloud's best moves. It uh, increases his speed, increases his fall speed, uh, and his him, weight. His weight makes yeah. him heavier, faster, stronger. All in a, uh, all, in all, just a very good thing to have. Also increases the uh, the ability of his specials, makes his recovery better. Uh, limit cross slash his side B is one of his best kill options. Mm -hmm. And that finishing touch, I mean, while not completely safe, still kills extremely early. Yeah, it's uh, not reliant. It's unfortunate. Oh, Ooh. and a very unfortunate stock does get hit with the stage spike. Usually. Um, any kind of knockback that hits you into the bottom of the stage will usually send you straight down, and you can either tech it, so you hit the wall, you don't bounce anywhere, mm -hmm. if you time it properly. But uh, we are going to even the stock count up, and Harambe already, again, taking this lead. So what you've been seeing here is uh, Cloud con constantly bench pressing his sword, not letting DK touch the ground. Uh, it's generally what you're gonna see in the matchup, but with that cargo throw, gonna get 35% off of that Nair, it's huge. Yeah, the thing with uh, Donkey Kong is really, really Good when it comes to getting grabs, he's really good. His uh, down tilt's very large, and tangibility, I believe, on the on the hand and his arm, uh, and does have a chance to trip. One and so three. He. Uh... Oh, and there's Ooh. that finishing touch you were talking about, going to seal the stock just under 90 percent. Huge call out from Harambe, getting Absolutely. that. Absolutely, and that was a, actually quite a commanding game. Yeah. These two have played numerous times, and it seems usually, Sylvine is usually the one to come out on top, but. Not this time. Yeah. Harambe has quite the message to say about these. Harambe yeah. barely letting that DK touch the ground, just constantly keeping him in the air, which is what you're supposed to do in this matchup. It doesn't let DK get those grabs and doesn't allow DK to work him. Absolutely. So the question is, where do you think they're going to go next? I think Battlefield. Probably. Oh, oh. and we're actually back to Smashville. We have a character switch to uh, Bowser Jr. Actually, uh, Morton, sorry. Yeah, uh, very. Being a little bit more politically correct of the uh, Koopalings, that is uh, Morton. That is Morton, yes. The gray clown car, a little bit of an angry face going on. Not a very happy camper, to say the least. It's probably what happens when you're not a very good character. But yes, I digress. <laughs> so we are off. It's actually pretty even in percent. Um, really, uh, it's just a matter of Sovine needs to keep himself in a spot where he can pull these uh, the, the little mini cars. Can't actually remember the name. Mecha Koopas. The Mecha Koopas, yeah. yes. They do decent percent, and he can pick them up after letting them run around for a little bit. Yeah, he, have to, he also can uh, get pretty good follow-ups off if they do have quite a bit of hit stun. Mm -hmm. And uh, the animation that if they get, if uh, they run into the enemy on the ground, oh, oh, and a very unfortunate SD there by Sovine. So um, that's gonna that's, that's a huge momentum shift for uh, Harambe since Harambe already had that first stock under his belt or yeah. that first game under his belt. Now he has. Uh, this is already a tournament stock for uh, for Sovine. Sovine, Sovine looking just, a little lost here. Ooh, a ooh, good spike into up smash. That's not actually a really true combo, but it worked. 
Oh, good call out with that. Uh, or that was an interesting call out, I should say, with the, uh, yeah. the finishing touch. Finishing touch. Going to be used on shield. Not going to actually get anything because of that use on shield. Oh, and the Koopaling actually being a little bit counterproductive for uh, Morton. Yeah. And so, so am I getting hit by his own projectiles, keeping him in the air, and then Harambe doing an excellent job not letting him land. Ooh, that was some really good shield pressure by by uh, Sovine. Almost breaking that shield, but frankly, he would have been so high from that upbeat that he probably wouldn't have been able to actually get anything out of that. Um, and now we are back into the disadvantage stage for uh, Sovine. Harambe just looking for probably the cross slash. Uh, that's probably what I would go for. I would either do that or read the get up from ledge with the... Uh, Oh, Ooh, and either the cross slash or I probably would have gone for... F-Tilt will seal it though, and that'll be GG's. 2-0 for Harambe, very, very well played by him. Uh, and Cloud has been looking a lot more polished, a lot more solid than his DK has as of late, but don't tell him I said that. So, pretty, <laughs> pretty, good, uh, pretty good showing by Harambe, I have to say. That, um, that first game was extremely commanding from him. Again, not letting DK touch the ground whatsoever. But then that interesting character switch from Sovine to the... Questionable to say the least. Yeah. Part uh, of me actually kind of wonders if he had actually switched to random and he just says, he, you know what, let's go for it. All or nothing, here we go. So we are going to get ourselves into the next set. Next set, I believe, is going to be... I think it's Asian Glow Justin. Correct, Asian Glow versus Justin, and the winner plays our number one seed on the PR, Daniel the Manuel. Daniel. So. Next uh, matchup will be really weird. It's uh, Sheik versus Game & Watch. That is also, that is going to be saying that uh, Justin is going to be playing a Sheik, because as we said off the, off the cast, that we, he has quite deep pockets. He has so many characters that he can play on the cast. He plays, plays Peach, plays Rosalina and Luma, plays Sheik. <laughs> Plays uh, Luigi. He's just all over the place with his character pool. He's got a he's got a Marth Pit Pit oh, Dark Pit. pit <laughs> even though they're essentially the same character. Justin uh, searching for answers in the cosmos right now on who he's gonna pick as a character. Just kind of asking the world, just who am I going? Who am I going to pick? But now enough about Justin. Let's talk about his opponent, Asian Glow. Asian Glow, currently not on the PR, does have a very it does relatively well on a. Uh, on his appearances at the Emmy Weeklies. Yeah, in bracket he does normally, he doesn't normally go 0-2. Uh, his game and watch is... Uh, Solid, I would very, say. Very strong. Um, a weird matchup that people don't normally understand and a weird character in general. A lot of, uh, a lot of I mean, there's no better word other than weird for Absolutely. game and watch. It's, he's very, uh, the word I'd probably use is uh, kooky. Kooky, yeah. It's, uh, that in itself is a very interesting word, but here we are, getting into game one is going to be Peach versus Game & Watch. And Justin uh, opting for uh, the quicker kill power of Peach rather than the yeah. fast, nimble Sheik. Yeah, Game & Watch is lost an entire dimension to the rest of the cast. He is only two-dimensional, making himself very, very light. So uh, things that'll kill very easily. And one thing that comes to mind, uh, be having a lot of experience in the Peach matchup, yeah. is the Parasol. The Parasol, Parasol yes. Parasol with Rage against very light characters, does have the potential to kill at even so low as zero. Zero, with a reverse hit. Absolutely. Um, Multi-hits are extremely weird in this game, where if you get, if you have a multi-hit move and you get one hit of it, you can, it can sometimes be even stronger than mm -hmm. getting all of the hits. But um, currently... So a lot, a lot in this matchup is uh, Peach Float, and uh, Game & Watch has a down tilt that has a win box above it. So when Peach is floating above Game & Watch, he can actually do a down tilt and it will send Peach a little bit higher, keeping him out of that danger zone. Not to mention that, he also has um, something that I think he could probably make use of is the, uh, his uh, neutral B, which can really s try to snuff out yeah. those, uh, those aerial approaches that, she uh, that Sheik, not Sheik, Peach, Peach, does have in her arsenal, especially with that strong forward here that's v that we just see him throwing out on shield. It's a very good move, very large hitbox, and there's that. There we see the wind box, especially. He also has that up air where he can send her even higher. And he's, Peach has very limited um, landing options unless she has like a turnip or she could, tries to go for a very risky down air, especially when you have a game of watch who has an invincible uh, head on his up smash. Mm -hmm. and very it, large head, very good kill power. So here we are back in the neutral game, and oof. a very, very well spaced. Uh, Air coming out from this peach. Justin calling out that uh, full hop from Game & Watch, not letting him uh, land. 
smacking him right in the face with that crown. And that was a, a good tech on the down tilt from Asian Glow. Uh, Peach's down tilt, one of the few uh, down tilts in the game. I believe it's the only one that has the, uh, the spike hitbox. It's a grounded spike hitbox. So if you were to hit somebody with it uh, at the very ledge and they are not on the stage, they will not get spiked by it. But if they're standing on the ledge, they will get sent directly into the ground. Very fast, very hard to react to. And uh, seems like Asian Glow was pretty ready for it. Got himself the tech. Here we go, another edge guard opportunity from Asian Glow, looking for that parachute, possibly. And one thing that uh, really shines with Game & Watch is he has a very good recovery. His, uh, his up sends sends him so high up. Mm -hmm. It is a little, and uh, especially the fact that he can act out of it. Uh, and then you see a little bit of Game & Watch tech that apparently a lot of Game & Watches don't usually Ooh. do very much. Um, right. If you use the double jump along with the bucket, you do go slightly higher to uh, mix up your recovery. and. Huge Ooh. call out from uh, the frying pan that Justin just used there to send Game Watch almost into that blast zone. And uh, that frying pan, uh, his up smash actually has uh, three different uh, instruments that he can use. Right. He either hits him with a tennis racket, a frying pan, or a golf club. Golf club has the longest range, obviously. Oh, not, not quite going to do that. Pete, going to steal it. Justin in the edge guard opportunity, let him back really on. Good. Game Watch with a very good recovery. Call out on the down tail with the shield, and uh, now we just see how he's going to react. Yeah. Gets the up behind the shield. In a situation like this, Asian Glow has to look for a couple of grabs and maybe go for potential nine hammer, which will kill Justin at this percent. Absolutely, and Justin being um, it's a very oh, go grab four throws, not a kill throw yet. If he would have possibly rolled past him and got a bet, uh, or ran past him and got a pivot, pivot grab, pivot grab that back throw definitely would have killed. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, goes, up, goes for that call out on the nine. Asian goes scouting for that hammer. He wants it so bad. He's getting all the other numbers out of the way before he can get that nine. <gasps> this might be, oh. oh and that, he gets two sixes in a row. That's actually something that you don't see very often, considering um, he has nine numbers to choose from. So the chances of that, I don't know the math off the top of my head, but it's a. Uh, not likely. Not likely. Uh, One in 81. Up throw for the, I'm assuming a, uh, going for a DI mix up. Uh, DI of course being a- No, grab F throw will kill at that percent. Absolutely. Game Watch being extremely light, albeit at 171%, I believe. Correct. So, uh, we, that was actually quite an even game, it seemed. Um, up until it, that last Asian stop. Glow obviously needed to get the jankest thing he could possibly get with the, with the Game & Watch to uh, to be able to seal that stock and take that game. But we do see the character switch on the winner's side. Yeah. From Justin going for uh, going for that Marth. And then we have a uh, uh, Omega Wily's Castle. Yeah, a, a stage uh, normally not seen too often in the competitive realm. Justin Justin's gonna be looking for those uh, dancing blades that uh, forward, forward, down, forward for that uh, crispy, crispy percent. Ooh, going for the, the last hit down variant. And so now we have uh, an edge guard situation, trying to space himself so that he can get these, uh, he can capitalize off his ledge options uh, with that short hop fair usually. And now here is where Marth shines at juggling, but. Asian Glow finding his way down with that down air. Absolutely, he tries to go for the uh, wave pants on that neutral B. Good up he had a shield is going to catch him. A lot of, uh, Oh, and there would have been a nine in the stock. But a, a little miss space, jumping a tad backwards. Now we just see a uh, dancing blade coming out from Justin every now and then. Asian Glow looking to try and get mm. that uh, that up smash. It will kill this percent, and that was very risky for that run up shield. Uh, Marth, as some people, as most people know, um, has a tipper <gasps> hitbox on his shield on his uh, sword. So any of his moves mm. that do hit with the very tip of his sword do extra damage, extra knockback, mm -hmm. especially that shield breaker. That shield breaker, fully charged, will break shields, no doubt, with uh, with that tipper hitbox. Mm -hmm. And if uh, Asian Glow had a step just slightly more, he would have actually gotten hit by that tipper hitbox and then died probably for it because mm -hmm. you're already at that. If you get hit by the tipper hitbox, you break your shield, you're already at the... Uh, the same range for the tipper hit a second right. time. Ooh, all that um, down tilt. Down tilt is going to take the first stock, so Asian Glow now in the lead. A lot of just uh, needs to uh, keep the lead and either find a way to time out for four minutes, which I kind of hope he doesn't, and just use this stock for uh, as much extra credit as he possibly can. Uh, <laughs> Marth going for a bit of a tumble there with that win box. A, a lot of uh, Marth's confirms are off of uh, first hit jab, but with a character that 
this light is Game & Watch. It's gonna be hard to get a confirm off of that jab one. Justin fishing for Dancing Blade, not quite gonna get it. That fair sending him off stage. Asian Glow landing with down air again. Oh, landing with the back air on up throw might Good, ooh. perfect shield by Justin. I don't think that up throw would kill yet. I don't, I think that Wiley's has a, a large ceiling. But as light as Game & Watch might be, that it's always a possibility. I think if he gets him to maybe 160, 170, that up throw will start to be a, a, a bit of a threat, but I think Ooh. he was, I think also uh, Game & Watch might have been ready for it. Mm -hmm. Not quite gonna get the shield grab. Asian Glow going for the, the fishbowl instead of the hammer. Not looking for that nine just yet. He's also at a, um, he's also at Rage, so it mm -hmm. oh, goes for the toot toot, down throw into up air. Not quite gonna find it. Down tilt sending off stage, edge guard oh, opportunity. And that that parachute. Up I don't think he has his jump. Oh, yeah. No, he's Took dead. He's dead, and Asia Glow takes game two. The two stock. Taunting at the very end, no less. Uh oh. That uh, two stock advantage, although Justin get, did get him to 156, but Game and Watch, that light, unable to get easy kill confirms off of uh, Jab 1 for Marth. And uh, we do see Game 3, Asian Globe banning the Smashville. Mm. And we'll see if uh, what Justin seems to want to answer with. Will he stay Marth? Not. That didn't quite work out. Is he going to switch to the uh, Sheik that he's so known for mm -hmm. all throughout Central Pennsylvania, actually? Right, yeah. Or are we just going to see him stick to Marth? Maybe pull back out the Peach? Who, Who knows? knows? Again, my man's wearing cargo pants. Got a lot of pockets. So, I think I think he stayed with Marth. I don't think I heard a character switch. I didn't really either. So I think. And now the question is, what stage it's Justin mm -hmm. going to take him to? Do you think battlefield or triplats of any kind? I think we might go to town. Although it's oh, we have a switch to corn. Interesting. Uh, I have never seen Justin's corn before, and we'll see how it fares against Asian Glow's game and watch. Well, currently this is a bit of a deficit, twenty percent. And um, although Justin is a very capable player, I don't see why he wouldn't be able to pull this off. Right. Um, Corn's neutral is essentially just going to be using that uh, that side view, the dragon lunge, uh, using the uh, the insta pin, so that he can be able to put him in situations of is he going to jump in, is he going to jump out, or is he just going to wait it out and do not nothing. do anything? Yeah. A lot of mix. When you get your opponent panicking, that's when you really start to win the game. Like, you can you can be down a stock. If you can get your opponent into a position where they are afraid of you, or mm -hmm. they are afraid of a certain option that you have, the longer you hold on to that option, the scarier and scarier it becomes. Right, and that pin that Eggs was talking about. Also, being able to able to use it off stage, and if he gets that tip or hitbox of it towards the end of the towards the end of the pin, that's actually a kill option. Absolutely. Um, we said with uh, Marth, he had his he has his uh, tipper, and Corrin, another Fire Emblem character, also with a uh, with a tipper hitbox on both forward smash and side B, the back hit a down smash and up smash as well. Oh yeah, that's so uh, quite a few. And as you saw there, he was able to angle the up smash uh, a little bit downward. Can hit off uh, can hit off ledge uh, at certain points if they are able to get hit in the two frames that they don't grab the ledge. Right. So uh, now we just see, Whoa. there it is. There's the e exact neutral I was talking about, the, uh, the instant pin into do absolutely nothing, wait for him to see what he does, and then react with an option from there. That wind box on that down tilt sending Justin a little high, keeping him in the skies. Asian Go going to put him in an edge guard situation here. Just wants to get him to a point where he can't land, and he has to take a risky option to try and get down. As you go on the ledge, gotta find a way back in onto the center stage. Justin kind of lets him back in, but grabs him for a back throw. Good use of these perfect pivots from Justin, trying to get that perfect pivot F smash. Insta pin, not letting oh, him back in. Back Good air, back in, that'll gonna do take it. Stock. So now we have Justin at 103%. I would like to see, I feel as though Asian Glow is probably going to go for another grab into an attempt at a nine. I think uh, Justin might be at too high of a percent for that. It's very possible, but. The longer he, uh, the more percent he takes, the, I feel like he's going to be a 2 2 percent. Mm hmm. There you go, Asian Go using that win box to keep him in the skies a little bit longer, allowing him to position and better for a kill option. I have to say, one of the most, uh, one of the biggest things throwing people off is all right, I wanted to land here, but I can't land here because there's a win box here. 
And Asian, Asian go, good use of the up to just try and deny him from uh, getting back to the stage. Walled him very, out. Very, very good edge guard. Not really losing that much, per or not really taking that much percent for it. This is back to an even game, although Justin with center stage control. Yeah, and now Asian Glow just trying to keep himself on these platforms, keep himself away from these large hitboxes so he can find himself an opening to get back onto the stage. And ooh, oh, he went for the risky. call out. That, that nine probably would have killed, but again, you have to get the nine to hit the nine. And you can't call. You can't uh, count out corn for an early co either. That counter is exceptionally strong. Absolutely. So if he just throws out a random a random uh, nine and it gets countered, that will kill him easily. Even with the Avon, um corn's uh, counter, one of the only ones that kills off the top, mm -hmm. still will kill on a stage with Ooh. a very high ceiling like that. Big up smash. Ooh, and a good roll away from that up smash. Mm -hmm. That would have been a tipper hitbox, but great not grab quite. from Justin. Gonna. Got that tipper up smash, huge damage. Absolutely, good coverage on the options because you saw him use the back air to try and cover the low get the uh, low options, and then he right. covered the uh, the landing on the platform with that up smash. Ooh, and a good ledge cancel on that jab into an air by uh, by Asian Glow. Dash attack to get him into an edge guard position. Both these players a little playing a little bit faster, a little bit more frantic. Well, this is tournament stock for both of them now, so it is a matter of. Whoever gets this next stock is out. Absolutely. Well, whoever, whoever loses the next stock is out. Right. Whoever gets the next stock gets to move uh, on and face yeah. Dan the Man. So, I know, um, I know that Justin has played Dan quite a bit. I don't know if Asian Glow has played Dan aside from friendlies, of course, very often. And uh, good use of the upbeat to uh, get himself out of the uh, out of that sma uh, the forward smash hitbox and that's not going to uh, do it quite, quite yet. yet. Not that tipper. That inside hitbox kind of just. Just kind of blowing Asian Glow off stage, oh, but that forward throw. Forward throw, not quite. Keeping him off stage. Just going to look to wall him out. Down air back to stage. Another is grab. Go for an up throw. Up throw. Yes, That'll he kill. Will. And that is going to be the stock and the set for Justin. So, I, I can't say I know very much about that matchup. No. I feel like. Um, I don't think many do. Justin really using Korn's disjoints. I feel like he could have probably just walled him out with more hitboxes. Yeah. But he still ended up getting the stock, still ended up getting the game, still ended up getting the set, and we'll be moving on to the next round to face Dan the Man. But mm -hmm. now, we are going to be right back, so stay tuned. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke. F-A-S-T. Fast.
right, welcome back, boys and girls. Here we are, back with round two of our uh, Millersville Smash Club MUTV Invitational. Our first match is going to be Dan the Man versus Harambe. It will probably be a Charizard versus DK, if not Charizard versus Cloud. Uh, and our second match is going to be Justin versus Control. That is correct. So here we are, Dan the Man, the man you see on your screen right now. Best solo Charizard man in Pennsylvania, self-proclaimed. We have uh, absolutely no backup information on that. And it is going to be Charizard Cloud. Uh, Dan has quite a bit of uh, matchup knowledge. Yeah. Because he plays uh, Control, number two on the PR, almost all the time. Uh, Especially also bracket. a Cloud main. Oh, oh I think loves, that's a dead Cloud. Uh, oh, no, not he, quite. he kept Still his, has jump. his jump. Yeah, that's one thing that... Uh, that that Dan loves to go for. He loves to uh, position himself back slightly so he can get the, uh, ooh, and a good and that stage spike. that stage spike on the weak hit of the dare, keeping him out, and Charizard only at 7%, and Harambe only on his, his last stock on this first game. But um, as I was saying, he likes to position himself so they can get that flamethrower off the ledge. Mm -hmm. um, force, Cla if Cloud tries to recover low, which is his recovery only allows him to recover low, uh, he will get hit by the fire and then he's either launched slightly upward so that he has to He gets hit by that forward smash or he'll go for down smash that hits slightly below ledge um, And that was a very good conversion with an auto cancel nair into up smash and Dan really Commanding lead Yeah, Dan's he just gets hit for the that, first time that entire stock now limit kept cloud from dying from that up there without it He might have died and this will probably be down Not, throw. I'm amazed yeah. it was an up throw um, If the smash roll platform would have been above him that would definitely would have been an up throw But it was right. more of a DI mix up because he was DIing in the direction which um, He was com or he was DIing in a way that he would have possibly been able to live the up throw mm -hmm. But it just so happens that the up throw um, The optimal angle that you DI that for the up throw is perfect perfect angle for uh down throw into forward air, yeah. or down throw into another and follow up. That, that'll play. be the first game. Uh, Harambe only doing 63%, and that uh, that down throw on the shield was not looking too safe. And Dan grabbed him for him, and up throw to and killed him. And um, these two tend to play quite a bit, actually. And they're oftentimes practice partners. So Dan, very good player, very good at adapting. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe we just saw a character switch. I'm not sure from who. You might have heard, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what character is. Oh. We have a double character switch. We have the Donkey Kong coming out from Harambe, and we have the patented Danendorf. Danendorf, yeah. Maybe we'll see some uh, some hype Danen Dan up tilts, and uh, maybe some Dan and spikes. Or the Dan inside. Or the Dan inside, that is correct. And we start off with the uh, mutual down tilts, and uh, Dan going for his bread and butter combo, the down throw down B. The down tilt into jab, sometimes turn, it'll pivot grab, down throw into a down B. But some vi uh, variation of that, some iteration. Uh, good F tilt to uh, deny the uh, the choke slam. Now this is a, a, a DK favored matchup and also stage. Oh. That low ceiling, DK's gonna be able to get that uh, ding dong, that cargo throw up throw up air at a way earlier percent. Here we go, both of these characters trying to wall each other out. Dan finding his way in with that dash both, attack. These are both very heavy characters too, so they're going to take quite a bit of time to kill each other unless we get ourselves a kill off the side with the really, really, the Spartan kicks of the chest. Now Harambe at this disadvantage, that dash attack, finding Dan finding his way in again, and that grab, another down B. Down, to, or down throw into down B seems to be the bread and butter from Dan. And Dan waiting to Good see wait. what he would try to do, so he waits on that uh, the roll in. And now I want to see what's going to become of this. We have, we still have two stocks left for Dan. And Dan reverse up air. Oh, oh, interesting. Decides to go for the uh, the call out on the down B. Not quite going to get it, but Dan this. just dancing around his shield. Not quite going to really commit to anything. Uh, commits to the. Uh, Dash attack, as I say. Goes for the hard call out on the charge up smash and oh. gets him, clips him with the up B, says, Get out of here. Sure, you can send him off the top. That was, so, that was wow. a very commanding 2 0 from Dan. That was a very quick set. Or is it not over? Are we doing best of three? Uh, no, we are best oh, of two. Okay. Best of two all throughout. That is so, uh, Dan. Likes to play himself some characters that are not quite very, not quite good, not no. quite good at all. 
but Charizard and uh, Gandorf very low on the tier list, uh, but Dan, just his aggressive, suffocating playstyle, won't let people in, and he just keeps people in that vortex. Yeah, Ganondorf, arguably, he's up for up in discussion for worst character in the entire game, up there with Zelda, Jigglypuff, King Diddy, all these characters, but Ganondorf among one of them, but still manages to get the win off a character that's so high up as Cloud, but even though that was the Charizard, and the, the, um, the Donkey Kong as well, which is still a very good character, but not. Donkey Kong's infinitely better than Absolutely. Ganondorf. So. He is a big, <laughs> big monkey. Very large man. Monkey. Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> and so. now we are going to be getting into our next set of round two. It is going to be Control, uh, your resident cloud main, Number two on the number two number on our PR. Millersville PR, and we are also going to be having Justin, number three respectively on the PR, as we saw him earlier. Very aggressive player, very, very technical. Mm -hmm. very, loves covering his options. Right. And uh, so, so I see on the screen we have a Bowser versus a. Uh, we have a Bowser coming out from Control, it seems. He does, he does like his Bowser. That is his resident grappler. Um, a lot, I play a lot of friendlies with these two guys, and they play a lot of friendlies with each other. And uh, as often practice partners, this will be an interesting set. Yep, and it's going to be Bowser versus Rosalina and Luma. So we are going Ooh. into game one. Uh, right. Bowser, also a big boy, just like the, uh, the, the, uh, King, the Ganondorf and the Donkey Kong that we just saw in the last game. Loves getting his grabs, has a lot of big, really strong hitboxes. And uh, Rosalina Luma, uh, Rosalina being from the Super Mario Galaxy franchise, or line of games, I Mario should games. say. And uh, Luma, her uh, friendly neighborhood star, uh, Luma is a, uh, extends a lot of her hitboxes, very mm. strong in her own right. But uh, Luma can either be killed by taking up at least 30% of damage or sent off stage into free fall. Uh, so not very hard to kill Luma, especially with such a big, beefy boy like Bowser. A lot of this matchup is just going to be Justin uh, walling Bowser out with this. Uh... Oh, and there we are. Luma is out of the picture. I believe it's 11 seconds or so that uh, Luma is out of play. But so just, you're going to probably see Justin play a little bit more uh, passively to wait for Luma to come back so you can start getting those larger and harder hitting um, smash attacks and aerials and things of that sort. But we do have an edge guard situation. Down tilt coming out slightly late to uh, try to keep Justin away from that ledge. Mm -hmm. Good call out on the grab coming out from control, or coming out from Justin, I should say. That uh, the armor on that down B keeping control safe from getting back aired by Rosa there. Another grab from Justin, gonna go for a down throw instead of a fair or a fourth throw. Oh, and Ooh. misses on the ledge, doesn't quite grab it. So an unfortunate stock taken from himself. Justin gonna find his way back onto stage. Gonna look for the Luma gentleman and get one up air, not two. Oh, and a good jab out of the F smash from Luma. Questionable F smash from Control. Gonna find his way back down though. Although, uh, Bowser is one of those characters where you can throw out something so random, like an up smash or sport smash or even th something like a back air, and it will kill at very early percents. Like that six, he was at 60%. I think if he would have gotten that up smash, that probably would have been a stock or very close to it. Yeah, Luma it, very, or Rosalina very easy to kill without Luma, so. Very con light. C control's gonna be trying to find his way in here. And uh, now it gets fourth throat off the stage. Ooh, and Ooh. there it is, that hard, hard call out with the forward smash. But this is 112% extra credit. Good pivot grab coming out from control up till, not gonna follow with Bread the nair. Butter, be a nair. Ooh. Ooh, doesn't quite respect the Luma. Luma is actually able to act out of uh, Rosa being in hit stun. So if you, grabbing is something that is not very good when Luma is in play because you can easily just throw a jab, mm -hmm. throw anything, any kind of move to knock Luma, or Rosa out of it. As you just saw, he got the grab, he got hit by uh, Luma, and that was that, he gets hit out of the grab. That time, uh, control very, uh, very. Ooh, oh, never my. mind. You got down air spiked by Rosalina, not letting uh, Bowser back onto the stage, not even letting him onto that ledge, just sending him down into the shadow realm. All right. Shadow realm. And 
So we hear we hear a bit of uh, friendly banter between the two of them. These two, good friends, play each other quite a bit in friendlies all the time. Although after that last match, I did hear uh, I did hear Control say, "I hate you so much. I hate you so much." So uh, maybe the friendship being a little bit strained there. But we're gonna see how this is go how this is going to affect game two. I think Justin's gonna be hovering on the character select screen, maybe switching it up. Uh, looks a little bit sleepy right there. Well, he's just kind of looking. Says, what do I want to play? A little what disinterested. It's like, oh, another day on the job. Maybe he's going to put on the tie, go to work, play some Donkey Kong. That'd be interesting to see. That would be absolutely interesting to see. Maybe see, like, a Godzilla versus King Kong, some oh, sort yeah. of deal. And instead, being so, have... He switched to Diddy Kong. Ooh, I am so interested right now. <laughs> I, myself, am a uh, Diddy Kong main, so I would like to see how this game plays out. Uh, now, universally just... terrible matchup for Bowser. Oh, absolutely. See, Bowser's problem is if he is above you, he essentially loses. So he does have the down B, which can break shields, but he gets juggled so easily because he is such a large character. And Diddy Kong, with that banana and large hitboxes such as forward air, his down tilt, his back air, all really good at covering landings. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of what we're going to see from Justin here is uh, fishing for those down tilts, the smash attacks, a lot of banana confirms into an aerial normally or another smash attack. And we also have, a, that was a very good use of the banana, um, getting him to commit to that jab to try and clear the banana out. If he would have gotten hit by the banana, he probably would have just fallen to ledge with the knockback, quite mm -hmm. honestly. And now we just see fishing for pivot grabs. Like five or six in a row. Oh, and that monkey flip, very unsafe, especially when you used on stage. This might be up there. Grab. No. Oh, I'm not quite gonna get the Koopa. <laughs> uh, Justin able to air dodge out of that, that up air. Maybe not just maybe not yet in the range, although I think rage might have affected it there oh on goodness, the controls. That's a very, very good tech chase. So you see him you see him go for the uh, the auto cancel forward air, knocks control onto the ground, misses the tech or um he does tech, but tech's in place. You saw Justin run back slightly to uh, get himself ready for the get up attack. That banana up smash not gonna quite do it. But the thing is now we have a Bowser at max range or at max rage, not max range. And Diddy Kong takes quite a bit of time to kill, but that is going to be the forward throw. Not quite going to get it yet. Bowser, that big body. Personally, I would have gone for a run-up down tilt up, down tilt into forward smash, or down tilt into up smash. Probably the forward smash would have been the best option, but uh, uh, the up roll tilt. into up tilt is going to take the stock. True combo. <laughs> not as true as some would like to think, but uh, and uh, with that rage, a little bit. Uh... <gasps> oh my god, and the call out on the runoff down air from Justin. Play you that was huge from Justin. Like the rate, I was just oh, talking man. about how that rage on the forward throw, forward air, or usually something that Diddy's go for at low percents, but because of the rage, the forward throw goes a little bit too far. Can't quite follow up with the forward air, but just calls him out with a runoff down air. That down air was that huge. was huge. So, so good fire control. Uh, very, uh, very similar to uh, what happened the first game. Uh, Justin but, catching Bowser's up B with the Rosa spike. This time, uh, Justin catching Bowser's up B with the Diddy Kong spike. And uh, now here we are, I believe, this is Grand Finals. This is Grand Finals. This is Justin versus Dan the Man. And we'll most likely see the Charizard from Dan. Uh, and who Maybe knows we'll what we're going to see. Maybe we'll see the Sheik from Justin. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll see the Diddy Kong yet again. This is a very good matchup for, for uh, Diddy Kong. A lot, of his, a lot of his characters fare extremely well against Charizard, that big body, able to combo him extremely well. Uh, but the universal uh, matchup we normally see from these two are Sheik Charizard. And we are actually going to see the Sheik Charizard. Uh, not going to go anything too far out. So uh, we are going to be going to Smashville for game one, as per usual. Um, so the thing about this, Charizard, as we've said many times in this broadcast, we, he's a very, very big boy. Dying off the top is not something he does very easily. Dying off the side is usually what is more likely. And Sheik is one of those characters where they will combo you into oblivion, but really struggles when it comes to ceiling stocks. So we see Justin going for these up tilts into, uh, into different kind of aerial confirms. Back, th or back air is what you just saw there. Mm -hmm. And now we return to the neutral game where Justin is just going to run away. He's going to try to space these uh, forward airs, charge the needles and uh, look to see if he can get a grab, attempt, uh, grab option. And uh, Dan going for the mix-up with the uh, jab into up smash. Buffy. Usually something that, uh, pretty good with Charizard. I believe the first 
jab sends outward, the second jab sends inward, so you can hit things like that forward smash. So you do jab, jab into either up B, jab, jab into grab, or um, jab, jab into up mash. Mm -hmm. Or you can just finish with a jab, jab into the third jab, which will just send say, them off stage. Put say, it in the edge get right off up. of me, I don't want you here. And uh, Charizard's jab is actually one of the faster jabs. It's about frame four, I believe. In a, to put in perspective, there's 60 frames per second, so that's a very, very fast move. So a lot of this, uh, oh, very safe on forward smash, arm shield, edge guard situation. There's that fourth or that uh, flamethrower that we've seen from uh, Dan every time that somebody's on ledge. And I would have liked to have seen him wait a bit on that, on using an aerial, go for the tibber back air. Uh, oh, and a good confirm the tip, the uh, needles into bouncing fish. Something that most sheiks usually do for uh, to get those kill confirms. Yeah, those aerial needles uh, pop up, pop up the enemy just a tad above where they normally hit, and it's perfect prime condition for them to be a bouncing fish and get KO'd off that side uh, blast zone. Um, and here we are. We are back on stage. You see uh, Dan running back and forth, trying to get himself in a position where he can either react to where Justin is going when he's facing when uh, Dan is facing away with him to hit him with the tipper back air. Um, Charizard, as you can see, for any of you who followed the Pokemon's franchise, he does have the, uh, the flame on the tip of his tail. That flame, uh, anytime he uses his tail for any of his moves, be it his nair, his back air, or his forward tilt, that, uh, that flame is going to be a larger, heavier hitting hitbox. There's extra knockback, extra damage, but Dan struggling to get a kill here. We are Justin. at even percent. Dan has officially been lapping percent. That up throw, questionable DI by Justin, but this is a rage uh, Charizard against a 0% Sheik. So who has the who has the advantage here is hard to say. Yeah, especially uh, with a player like Dan, so uh, formidable in this matchup and the character. He's a very, very yeah. aggressive, also very good punish game, if I do say so myself. Uh, and then another not, needles into bouncy fish. Not, not quite. quite kill. Gonna That's seal a it. very, very thick lizard. Can't say dragon. He's not a dragon. He's player. not a dragon. That up air almost, almost connecting. And you also have the uh, the jab coming out from Justin. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that Sheik's jab is frame two. It's very fast. It is a very, very fast move. Probably Sheik's fastest option. Oh, Ooh, and the yep. missed tech into the forward smash is going to seal the game for Justin. Very well played, and I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be some sort of, I feel like it's going to ban either Triplats or Town and City. Most likely Triplats, because with that top platform, it's very, very easy for Dan to get a, a grab up throw and killing him off the top way quicker. Um, also, Sheik, um, mostly killing off the top with the Banish hard read on the air dodge, mm -hmm. or the up, the up air. You, pretty hard to kill off the top, especially on a stage like Battlefield, where it does have the higher ceiling. Makes killing off the top a little bit harder, mm -hmm. especially with a very, very heavy character like Charizard. So I feel like Triplats is probably the best option for the ban. That is um, taking away Battlefield and Dreamland, but I guess not. So it's going to actually be another double character switch of the Dandendorf against the Marth. Uh, the Danendorf so far is showing more success in this bracket than uh, the Justin Mark has, uh, but we'll see how it how this goes. Uh, Justin, I, I don't want to throw shade, but he's a very good player. Probably, I would say, a little bit better than uh, Harambe is, so he probably will have a little bit of a better time. Oh my god, and that hard call out with a down angle forward smash is going to steal the stock away right from under his nose. Huge call up from Dan the Man with that meaty, meaty elbow. And so here we see the choke slam. Tries to get the tech chase with the with the follow up choke slam, but not quite going to get it. Good tech on the down air. And now we return to the neutral. Dan with a significant lead. Uh, I think he wanted to get that down B to uh, miss the platform so that it could hit him, but. Right now, this is where Marth Rye is keeping his opponent in the corner, not letting him back onto the stage, although Dan rolling in. This is the pivot grab. Going to get punished for it. Up air into up air into back air, sends him off stage, back onto that ledge, and a missed jab, I believe that was from, uh, Justin. from Justin, is going to get met with that down tilt, a very, very big boot. And uh, that's going to be yeah. the stock. Not quite going to get back to stage from Dan, but this is Ganondorf. Ganondorf hits like a truck. And as Ooh. I say that, he just takes 
That was about what? 19% off the fair. Oh, Huge oh my tech goodness. off the up tilt. And Dan. Oh my goodness, Justin, that was insane. Justin like, with that amazing, amazing tech off of that up tilt. That would have killed without that tech. Absolutely. That would have been the stage fight, that would have been the game, and that would have been game three, but we still have a 70% deficit from Justin, so we will have to see whether he can clutch this out or if Dan can force the game three with the Danendorf. This, yeah, this is a tournament stock situation for Dan the Man. This is a tournament stock situation for Dan the Man. And that oh. meaty, meaty fist coming out, sending him off the back. And that is the Danendorf taking his second game of the set, uh, second game of this entire tournament? With, with, yeah, with the Ganondorf. And here we go. <laughs> Dan with a big old smile on his face. Can't he knows what he did. Can't believe that. That game was... So. Yeah. <laughs> that game was, <laughs> game was questionable. Just, just not looking very amused with uh, Dan's antics. So I feel like we're going to have a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more serious of a game for this game three, considering this is the final Technically, game. Technically, this is winner's finals, but because we don't have a loser's bracket, we have grand finals, and it's going to be the Danendorf versus Rosaluma. Uh, FD was the ban from Dan, so we go to Rosalina and Luma's best stage, which is Town and City. Uh, now, this is probably a, a harder matchup for Ganondorf to deal with because of Luma. Um, that star going to keep him out, although Dan destroying Luma off the left side there, leaving uh, Leaving Justin a little bit defenseless, but again, in this matchup, Gendorf still struggles. And you see Dan going for the, uh, the hard call out on that, uh, down, that side B with the, uh, the choke slam. But the thing about the choke slam is that the uh, opponent is standing too close to the ledge. Uh, that will be a choke slam, and both players will lose their stocks because Dan will just grab her by the throat and drag her down to see the abyss with her, or mm -hmm. with him. And the hard call out on the forward smash is going to take Luma out. Got to do some pretty good shield damage on Justin, and now we see Dan just keeping that that a uh, oh, oh and a very unfortunate SD, and now we are back on torment stock for Dan. Dan just throwing out hip boxes in, this, in center stage, getting up tilted for it. And the thing about Ganondorf is he has such oh, no. large hip boxes, <laughs> and these almost all of these hip boxes are going to kill Luma. So it's oh, apparently that dash attack is going to prove me wrong in that beefy beefy forward air. That'll do it though, Luma's gone again. Luma is dead, and the Nair from ledge, going to get that boot to the face to try and call him out. Gets the ledge chomp, he is not going to have ledge invincibility for this. Dan doesn't do anything Dan about him, let's back on. punishing for it. Ooh, reads the roll with the down B, not quite gonna kill yet either. Good wait. That Dan's going to go a little bit too deep for these edge guards one of these times and just fail to make it back to ledge. Justin's gonna be trying his best to wall Dan out here. These back airs are huge. Oh, and Luma is dead. Justin and this back corner. air is going to kill if it connects. But it's just a matter of if he needs to connect it and not get hit by uh, anything in the process. He still has an entire stock left to go through after he seals this up. So I really, he really just needs to show that what he can do, take the stock out and somehow manage to clutch it back for the second stock. And that then if he wants to make it to the end of this, so now, call, and the boot to the back kicks him off the side. And here we are going back, back to the neutral game. This is a... Uh, that ooh, almost that killed. So close. I think, I think if Justin got uh, the two hits of that, it definitely would have killed. Absolutely. But now we are back on stage. And the gentleman coming from Luma, not going to kill. He's a very big boy. Dan... Uh, <laughs> Great grab from Justin. Sending him back off stage, telling him, no, get off. And these jabs on shield, very good shield pressure. Falling out the roll, down tilt into jab, or into dash attack. Luma is dead, so what can Dan do about this? Is this Ganondorf? Ganondorf does still hit like a truck. <gasps> oh, and that down smash almost going to catch him, but Justin not quite yet. That, Justin getting that shield out just in the nick of time to knock it. And Dan needs to try and capitalize on the fact that Luma was not there, but not quite. Dash attack, tech roll in, questionable. Although Justin not doing anything, I, I'm surprised he didn't grab him there. Dash attack going to hit Luma. Luma still living, only 40% on Justin. Justin gets the grab, forward throw. Oh, not, not gonna take quite. it, that's sick. Although... I'm surprised he didn't down tilt at the ledge there to try yeah. two frame, but this is almost 200% on Dan. This is something you don't see 
And that is Luma that is down tilt is huge. Taking Luma out of the game. This would be Max back throw. Rage, back throw. Not quite gonna kill yet either. Oh my goodness. Ganondorf. This is insane. Ganondorf not sitting too terribly pretty at 204%. Absolutely not, and that back, that back will take it. definitely Absolutely. take it, and that'll be very the good tournament. Very good stock, very yeah. good set from both of these players. Uh, Dan, Dan with a big old smile on his face. Justin still not looking very amused with Dan's antics, but let's be honest, who would? Dan loves loves himself some memes, <laughs> and hey. absolutely loves to disrespect, but. That's going to do it here for us, and so we are going to send you guys away to another commercial break. Stay tuned. See ya. La, 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 oh, 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 la, 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 la. Boutique number nine is your one-stop shop to look great. This affordable boutique is steps away from Millersville University and is stocked with rows of dresses and outfits for the contemporary, trendy, and unique woman. Personalize your style with a wide variety of jewelry and accessories to browse from. All Millersville University students receive a 10% discount on their entire purchase from the shop. With new styles and an inventory updated weekly, you'll always find something new and trendy. Boutique number 9 is located on 28 South Prince Street. For a shopping experience that doesn't break the bank, come in and visit Boutique number 9 today. La 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 la, la la, oh oh oh. La la la, oh oh oh, la 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 la, la la. And we are back. Welcome back. We are here with your first ever Millersville Smash Club and MUTV Invitational, Justin. So. Tell me, Justin, you did it. You won. How does it feel? It's uh, it feels fine. It was expected, so <laughs> I can't be that happy about it. Obviously, there's always somewhere more to go. There's always more things to do. So, coming from this win, we also have the Emmy Weekly later tonight. Do you think that this victory over Dan the Man, victory over Control, do you think this kind of momentum will carry over into the Weekly? I expect to win tonight as well. Absolutely, as we all do, but obviously things happen. So, back in that grand final set, you saw the switch from, we saw you switch from the Sheik to Marth for, I guess, the Ganondorf? Yeah. How did you feel about the, the Ganondorf coming out? What did, what did you think of that? Uh, it, it wasn't going to change the outcome, but uh, I uh, switched off a of Sheik for uh, more games for the fans out there. I do it for the fans. Absolutely. So, we also saw you pull uh, Marth out versus Asian Glow. Is this something that you've been practicing, or is it just something that you thought would be a little bit more suited to the matchup as opposed to the Sheik? We also saw your Peach. We saw your Rosalina and Luma just showing the character select that you have. So, do you just decide, what do I want to play today? What am I feeling? I'm going to do this. Or is it more of a, I have this for this matchup, this for this matchup? What uh, do you think? I can uh, be considered a counter picker, but it also depends on who I'm going against. If I'm going against someone who I don't think will challenge m me, I'll be more inclined to go a secondary character rather than Sheik. Understandable. So, we do have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tell me a little bit more about your uh, your thought process through this whole thing. You played Asian Glow round one, correct? Mm -hmm. You played uh, Control round two. Mm -hmm. He him pulling out his Bowser as opposed to his, his regular Cloud. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that was a little bit of a sign of disrespect from him, or just uh, not really taking this as seriously as you as he normally would in Emmy Weekly, or mm. do you think he just sort of thought you would struggle more against the Bowser than you would against the Cloud that you've probably practiced quite a bit against? I don't really know his thought process behind the Bowser pick. It didn't make a difference though. I expected to win against the Bowser and the Cloud, so. All right, and any uh, final thoughts that you want to say to the fans out there who are, who've been cheering for you throughout this entire thing? Happy to see you win, so any final thoughts for them? Any final words? No. All right, there you have it. 
So that is uh, Justin, your first champion on the, the MU Invitational. Catch us next time for uh, Melee. And uh, this is uh, Chris Eggs Hardy signing off.